Let's look at the TCA cycle. We know that the pyruvic acid produced. We know that the pyruvic acid will combine with coenzyme A to make acetyl coenzyme A. And we know that this process requires uh, produces NADH and requires NAD and also it releases a carbon dioxide molecule. Let's look in a little bit more details over here. Okay, we know that pyruvic acid over here has been produced through the process of glycolysis in the cytoplasm. Now, this pyruvic acid will combine with this molecule, coenzyme A, and as a result, coenzyme A plus the pyruvic acid, both of them will produce what? Acetyl coenzyme A. And as you look over here, this acetyl coenzyme A contains two carbon, one, two carbon molecule. And we're gonna look at what happens to this two carbon molecule. Well, this is the oxaloacetic acid. It contains three carbon molecule. So it takes two carbon molecule, gives it to four carbon molecule, and as a result, this becomes six carbon molecule. Now, let's look at this one. So you see over here, two carbon molecule, one, two, and you see over here, four carbon molecule, one, two, three, four. If I take this two carbon and add it to this four carbon, as a result, this one and this one, both of them will give a six carbon molecule. And this six carbon molecule is called citric acid. Now, this two carbon molecule has been given to this four carbon molecule. How about this molecule over here? Coenzyme A, what happens to coenzyme A? Coenzyme A becomes back free. And what is this coenzyme A? Coenzyme A is waiting for another pyruvic acid. As soon as another pyruvic acid is available, coenzyme A will bind to this pyruvic acid and make another acetyl coenzyme A. And again, acetyl coenzyme A will give the two carbon molecule to this one and become citric acid. So citric acid is the first molecule in the Krebs cycle. So the first molecule formed in the Krebs cycle is the citric acid. What happens to citric acid? Citric acid converts to isocitric acid. Isocitric acid converts to alpha uh, uh, ketoglutaric acid. And uh, in this step, you see one NAD is converted to NADH. And what is the next step? Alpha uh, ketoglutaric acid converts to succinyl coenzyme A. Now, this step, as you see over here, requires coenzyme A. So you need a coenzyme A and NADH for this step to take place. Uh, if there is no coenzyme A or NADH, this step cannot take place. And what happens to succinyl coenzyme A? A big converts to succinic acid. So succinyl coenzyme A converts to succinic acid. Let's look at this in a little bit more details, uh, uh, what happens in this react. Now, remember over here in this step, we said we need what? We need the acetyl coenzyme A. So in order for this step to come, become the next molecule, in order for this molecule to become this molecule, or in order for alpha uh, ketoglutaric acid to become succinyl acid, we need what? We need the coenzyme A. And now in this step, when this molecule converts to this molecule, when, when succinyl coenzyme A converts to succinic acid, it produces coenzyme A. And this coenzyme A is the one that has been used in this step. So basically, coenzyme A is recycled over here. Coenzyme A is produced by this step and used by this step. Also, this step releases carbon dioxide. And if you look at these two steps over here, this is a six carbon molecule. And now this one is a five carbon molecule. Why? Because one carbon molecule has been released as a carbon dioxide over here. This is five carbon molecule. Now this one is a four carbon molecule because another carbon dioxide has been released. So as, a, as these molecules go into circle, decarboxylation occurs. Means like carbon molecules are released in the form of carbon dioxide. And also in this uh, part over here, over here, if you see, GTP is produced. This is the GTP. Now, GTP, again, contains three phosphate. And over here is the ADP. So GTP will give one of the phosphates to ATP. 
so you have ATP over here ADP the EDP contains 2 phosphate if the GTP which contains 3 phosphate gives this one 1 phosphate as a result this will become what ATP means like it will contain 3 phosphate and the GTP now has one less phosphate so the GTP becomes what GDP uh, uh, with 2 phosphate so GTP is with 3 phosphate GDP is for it with 2 phosphate if GTP is produced and it gives one of the phosphate away to this one as a result this becomes with 3 phosphate and GTP becomes GD and I will go to the next step and in this step you see if it is produced and I will go into the next step uh, produce malic acid and malic acid will become back oxaloacetic acid so what basically happens over here you produce NADH over here NADH over here and NADH over here so one circle one cycle produces three NADH so in the entire cycle we produced how many NADH one two three so the entire cycle produces three NADH one two the entire cycle, cycle produces how many FEDH? 1. So this cycle produces 1 FEDH and it produces 3 NADH. And also this cycle produces, uh, what else? It produces 1 FEDH over here, a GTP. So the cycle produces 1 GTP. And we know that the NADH and FEDH will go through the electron transfer chain or electron transfer system and 1 NADH will produce 3 ATP and 1 FEDH will produce 2 ATP so because there is only 1 FEDH produced so all together what we are going to have 1 FEDH equals 2 ATP and uh, uh, because there are 2 pyruvic acid 1 pyruvic acid will go through the circle produces 1 FEDH the second pyruvic acid goes through the circle produces the second FEDH and all together from the FEDH we're gonna have 4 ATP 2 from each FEDH now on the other hand 1 NADH equals 3 ATP 1 pyruvic acid goes in a circle and it produces how many NAD we said NADH we said 3 1 NADH 2 NADH and 3 NADH are produced uh, as you look from it so 1 2 3 NADH each NADH equals 3 ATP so all together from one circle that it turns how many ATP is produced? 9 3 from this, 3 from this and 3 from this if it turns 2 times 6 from this step, 6 from this step, 6 from this step because each round produces 1 NADH hope this helps